TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Israel's defense establishment has evidently come to terms with the United States' intention to jointly return into compliance with the 2015 nuclear agreement with Iran. Western diplomats accuse EU foreign policy chief Joseph Borrell of pro-Iranian bias. The most senior Christian Maronite cleric affirms that the problem facing Lebanon today is not a domestic issue, but rather Iran's use of Lebanese territory with the aim of confronting Israel. The United States reiterates its support for Israel as it works to counter the threats posed by Iran's blind behavior throughout the Middle East. In an address to the annual conference of the ultra-left J Street organization, U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations Linda Thomas-Greenfield highlighted that while the Biden administration's position on the 2015 nuclear deal is clear, in which it is ready to return to the agreement if Iran returns to full compliance with its nuclear commitments, Washington's representatives are working with their international partners in Vienna to determine whether or not that is possible. It is important to explain that while Jerusalem's political establishment remains deeply divided on the way of confronting Tehran's nuclear-related aspirations, the defense establishment under alternate premier and defense minister Benny Gantz has evidently come to terms with the American aspiration to comply with the 2015 nuclear agreement. Therefore, parallel efforts are being made to support the United States on the one hand, all the while conveying Jerusalem's security-related concerns to Washington with the expectation that the Biden administration will take those into account. Iran החליטה להשאיר אורניום לרמה של 60 אחוזים וממשיכה בתוקפנות שמערערת את יציבות האזור. גם בנושא הזה יש קונצנזוס מלא. לא נאפשר לאיראן להגיע ולפרוץ לסף גרעיני. כדי להתמודד עם האיום האיראני, נפעל ביחד עם שותפינו האמריקאים, האירופאים ועם מדינות נוספות באזור. בעת הזו נדרשת נחישות מדינית וגם יכולת מבצעית. מערכת הביטחון כולה בהובלתי תמשיך לשמור על הקשר האסטרטגי והביטחוני עם שותפינו, עם שותפינו בכלל ובראשן ארצות הברית ולפעול בכדי שאיראן לעולם לא תשיג נשק גרעיני ותערער את יציבות האזור. While Israel is seemingly concerned by the possibility of far-reaching concessions being made toward the Ayatollah regime in nuclear-related talks in Vienna, not all of the participants are susceptible to the Islamic Republic's tactics of negotiations, most notably France and the United Kingdom. Nevertheless, the European Union, whose High Representative for Foreign Affairs and Security Policy, Josep Borrell, acts as the official coordinator of the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, is seemingly an ardent supporter of the 2015 agreement. Western diplomats who asked to remain anonymous voiced frustration that while the EU foreign policy chief, in his official capacity as coordinator, is expected to act in an impartial manner, Borrell has not shied away from vocally and repeatedly laying the blame for Tehran's aggressive behavior on the United States, utilizing all of the tools at his disposal to pressure the E3 and Washington to make far-reaching concessions beyond reason. Borrell's pro-Iranian bias, as they put it, was once again reflected at the EU Foreign Affairs Council, which was briefed by the High Representative via video conference yesterday. We have been talking about the progress on GCPOA, the ongoing talks in Vienna. Over the past week, uh, the talks have moved from general to more focused issues, sanction lifting and nuclear implementation on both sides. The task continues, there are some lights of progress, and just the fact that the U.S. are rejoining the GCPA and return to the full implementation of the deal would make the world much safer. High Representative Borrell further noted, while not being able to go into details vis-a-vis -vis discussions held behind closed doors, there is goodwill from both the United States and Iran to reach an agreement. I think that both parts are really interested in reaching an agreement. 
and they have been moving from general to more focused issues, which are clearly on one side sanctions lifting, and on the other side nuclear implementation issues. I cannot go into details, but I think that uh, there is a real good will from both parts to reach an agreement, and that's good news. During the Foreign Affairs Council meeting, the dire political deadlock in Lebanon, which has brought the country to a verge of collapse, was also discussed. Unhappily, we see no progress. No progress on government formation or on needed reforms. And destruction of the Lebanese political forces effectively blocking a way out of the crisis must stop. I think that um, the ministers are very much worried about it, some countries especially. Despite deep-rooted corruption and foreign influences directly affecting Beirut's capacity to realize much-needed reform, the top EU diplomat voiced his perceived need to incentivize the political parties in Lebanon to act constructively. We need to look for ways to incentivize measures in order to push the political parties to form a government and to face the real economic and governance reform that the Lebanon is needed so much. But it was nothing concrete. That's what I didn't include it in my information about the, the council. Turning to Lebanon, where the most senior Christian Maronite cleric, Patriarch Shara Boutrous el Rahi, affirmed that the problem facing Lebanon today is not a domestic issue. In an interview with the American CNBC News Channel, the Christian Lebanese leader was asked bluntly how to deal with the problem which the Iranian proxy Hezbollah poses to his country. I mean, it's been described to me, Lebanon, Lebanon's the patient on the operating table, and Hezbollah's the cancer. How do you get rid of the cancer without killing the patient? How do you do that? Because you know Lebanon, you know Hezbollah better than anyone. Is it possible? Because it seems as if they've got all the leverage. Sure, I want to repeat, there is a problem in Lebanon. And this problem needs to be addressed. The Maronite Patriarch further noted that while he would agree to hold talks with the leader of Hezbollah, the latter does not have the power to determine the future of his own Iranian-controlled organization. It's possible that we meet together, but neither him nor I have the capacity to address the issue of arms, because this issue is way bigger than Lebanon. Patriarch Pshara further unveiled that in talks with U.S. officials, the Christian leadership in Lebanon urged Washington not to use Beirut as a pawn and its nuclear-related diplomacy with Tehran. We say, and this is what we asked from the Americans that we met. We asked them not to make Lebanon a negotiating card between the US and Iran when they want to settle the nuclear issue. And as I said before, the issue of arms should be addressed with Iran, because Iran is the source. And it's very well known that Hezbollah, as everyone says, Actually, they don't like to be called a militia. I would say an Iranian military force in Lebanon to combat Israel. Why should they combat Israel from Lebanon? If you want to fight Israel, why do you use Lebanese territory? Turning to Tehran, where the increased tensions between the Islamic Republic of Iran and Israel are a topic of discussion among ordinary Iranians living under the Ayatollah regime, with residents of Tehran voicing varied opinions about their perception of Israel and the way their leaders should act. و مقاومت کرد تنها وسیله حرف زدن با اینا مقاومت و مقاومت هم سختی داره اسرائیل چون در معرض ناحقی قرار داره و خودش ناحق هست خودش از بین خواهد رفت 
حالا چه ده سال دیگه چه 20 سال دیگه از بین خواهد رفت سعی کنیم از جنگ دور بشیم ولی باید محکم ایستاد ولی باید سعی کنیم که فوری وارد جنگ نشیم باید با تدبیر عمل کنیم با درایت ما بشینیم اینجا و میگیم محکوم میکنیم که نمیشه بشم تو خونه میخوام محکوم میکنم محکوم میکنم یا یه ده تا 20 تا موشک بزنیم بهش کار یه سره کنیم دانشمندای ما رو هسته ما رو نمیدونم انرژی و همه رو میاد نابود میکنه برای چی ما بشینیم اینجا و میگیم محکوم میکنیم که نمیشه نه هیچ قوی هم نیست اسرائیل یه تار انکبودیه و خدا چه سختی داره آقا به نظر من اولین دشمن ایران که نه اولین دشمن اسلام اسرائیل ما یادمون نرفته تو چهل سال گذشته اسرائیل چه بلاهایی سر ما سر دانشمنده و حتی تو زمان جنگ چه کمک هایی کرده به دشمنامون هیچ کدوم از اینا رو فراموش نکردیم و ما همینجوری سینه به سینه حتی به بچه هامون اینا رو یاد میدیم که دشمن اول آخر ما اسرائیله هیچ دلیلی برای ارتباط برقرار کردن با اسرائیل نداریم Thank you for watching us. As part of TV7 Israel's prayer initiative, I would like to encourage you today to join myself and the team here in Jerusalem to lift up Lebanon once again in prayer for its salvation and peace, alongside prayers for our persecuted brothers and sisters around the world, in addition to our ongoing prayers, of course, for the peace of Jerusalem and the salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Hassan, wishing you an Erev Tovu Mevorach, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.